All right, this video is going to walk you through using the shell tool in Fusion 360. The shell tool can be found right up here in the modify panel. And if we hover over that, it kind of gives you a look at what that does. Um, the other way to get to this is through your shortcuts menu, hit S on your keyboard and uh, start typing shell and it'll pr pretty quickly drill down to that tool. So the shell tool will take a solid body that you have in your design and it will make it hollow. And basically you get to specify which surfaces should be kept and removed. And you also get to specify how thick the walls of that solid should be. But uh, it's important to remember that the shell tool is going to hollow out the entire solid, everything that you have in your design. So the tricky part about using this tool is deciding um, in what order to use the shell tool. So uh, I've clicked on the shell tool right now, and it wants me to select, um, it, it's already hollowed out this object. Uh, it wants me to select specific faces to keep or remove. So if I'm going to make this uh, little tapered cylinder into a cup, then I'm going to want to remove the top surface. So I click on that, and now it wants me to specify the thickness of what is left over. So if I make that one eighth of an inch, it's going to give me a thickness of an eighth of an inch on all of the surfaces that I did not click to remove. So I still have a bottom surface here. If I also clicked on that bottom surface, it would get removed as well. So as I said, one of the important things to think about when you're using the shell tool is what order to do things in. So I'll give you an example here. If I wanted to make this little uh, building block here that is mostly hollow, but uh, not completely. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If I do a section analysis on this and just show you where it's hollow and where it's not, as I start to peel this back, we can see that the studs on top, not hollow. The holes in the bottom are, and they, we have a continuous thickness for all of these features on the bottom. So uh, what I need to do is to construct the bottom part of this shape and then hollow it out with the shell tool, then add the studs after that. If I start with this extrusion on the bottom and I use the shell tool on this and I remove that bottom face, then it will hollow out this entire rectangle, but that leaves me with some more steps to do where now I've got to go in here and sketch and extrude the tubes that are on the bottom. Now the thickness of these walls are the same as the thickness of these walls. So it would be a good idea then to extrude these holes and then use the shell tool and it will leave me with all of these hollow tubes in the middle. Now if I use the shell tool and remove that bottom surface and I specify the same thickness, I get my 0 0.05 inch thickness for the entire outside and, and top part of this box, but I also get it for these tubes down the middle, which saves me a bit of work. And then I can go along afterwards and put the studs on top. Now, if I did this in a bit of a different order here, if I had my studs on here first, and then I go to use the shell tool, now when I select the shell tool, I click the bottom surface and I go to give it my 0 0.05 inch thickness, I get an error because it can't even perform this particular shell with the studs up here. The geometry is uh, not going to allow that. So if I reduce that thickness down to 0 0.01, then we can see what happens. We end up with a solid that is completely hollowed out. If I break this down with a section analysis, we'll be able to see that the studs are actually hollow too which is not what I was going for. So for this particular model, I needed to extrude my base rectangle first, my hollow three holes on the bottom, second, then perform the shell, then add the studs on top. Now the shell tool is going to recognize bodies. So if you're working in a component that's got just one solid body, then the shell is going to shell the entire thing. Um, here I have a component made from one solid body. If I make a second solid body on top of this and change this from, from join to a new body, so now I have technically two different solids going on within this component, and then I go to use the shell tool and remove this top surface, we can see that 
it will shell just the top body. And if this is what I wanted for an entire solid, I could treat these as separate bodies until the shell is performed and then uh, do a combine on the two bodies in order to bring them together. And then the shell is only affecting the first body, but I can combine the two into one body afterwards. End up with basically a different thickness on the bottom than I have on the sides. And one last thing worth mentioning here with the shell tool is uh, that you're going to see this option here for tangent chain. If I have a object like this one and I have tangent chain selected and I choose, uh, let's say, this fillet radius to remove, it's going to automatically also select any of the flat surfaces which are tangent to this uh, curve that I selected. So it's going to remove that entire edge with the rounded corner and the two flat sides adjacent to it. If I step back here and I uncheck tangent chain, now I select the same surface. You notice that it's highlighting independently and I can remove just that one feature, uh, that one surface instead of the two flat sides that are adjacent to it. So that's what that button's for. And like with most of our other 3D modeling tools, we can opt to either make our shell go inside from the outer surface of the object, or we can shell on the outside where we use that object as sort of the, the minimum and then add thickness to those walls moving in the outward direction.